Welcome to Hack Make Mod. I'm Chad Capper, and I'm going to show you step by step how to build the YouTube counter. The easiest way to do this is to break it down into three sections. In the first section, we're going to go ahead and load the software onto the microcontroller. Then we're going to build all the electronics. We're going to test to make sure it works and then we'll put the case together and finish the assembly. Before we start on anything, let's make sure we have all the parts. If you bought this off of our store, it'll give you everything you need with the exception of the enclosure. First, you'll notice we have a little card here that has all the information. The first one is a QR code and a link for the uh, 3D files for the enclosure. Second is the QR code and a link for the Arduino IDE. That's the uh, programming software you use to uh, flash your microcontroller. And then thirdly, we have all of these steps in a written form on our website, and there's a QR code that'll take you to our projects. Additionally, I added just a simple little cheat sheet so you could very easily wire it up visually, and you can see uh, what pins go to what pins. Included in the kit, you get a couple of display units. They each come with a ribbon cable. And the colors on these are random, so you could get the same colors, you could get different colors than you see here. Comes with these uh, extra little connectors, which you won't need. And uh, really all we'll need are the two displays and one of the wires. The microcontroller comes with all these header pins, um, which aren't necessary. We don't need those, all we'll need is the microcontroller itself. You'll need this EVA foam, which is just uh, used for the spacer pads. It has double stick tape on the back side of it. We have a thicker pad we use to stick the microcontroller on the back of the display. You're going to need some kind of 5 volt USB power supply. You'll need a USB cable. In our kit, we include a 6 foot USB cable. And then we're going to need a strip of vinyl for the front of it. It's made by Cricut. It's part of their premium vinyl series. I just included in my kit a, a strip just big enough to cover the face of it. I like to print my enclosure in this um, silvery gray type of material. Um, it makes it look kind of shiny. If you have a printer with a smaller bed, I did design a split version which comes in two halves and allows you to fit it on a smaller printer. And then you just uh, Put the overlaps together and super glue it together and that should uh, work just fine for you. The only difference is you're going to have a slight, you have a line in the middle of this, but other than that it should look fine. To set up your microcontroller, uh, we'll always have the links and reference material on our website so you can just go to the project there and there will always be these links. Um, you want to scroll down to the portion here where we get technical. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the Arduino website. You want to, if you don't have this, you want to go ahead and download the version of the IDE for your operating system. IDE is short for Integrated Development Environment. It's essentially the, the program that you use to flash your microcontroller. So once you download and install that, uh, you, you can open a window that looks like this. On our website, we explain exactly how to install the ESP8266 microcontroller. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna skip that and go straight to the sketch. Okay, so now we have a brand new empty sketch uh, ready. Now we wanna go over to socialgenius.io. Go ahead, register an account here. I already have an account registered, so I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. So then you wanna go to your YouTube channel get the uh, link up in the URL and you go ahead and paste that in here preview and save changes and right here it shows you it pulls your profile and then you want to hit generate code for my project and in here you have uh, six different um, variables that you can adjust but really all you need is put in your SSID that's the name of your home network or wherever you're gonna put this uh, your password and then the data pins. Now we have this preset to match what the data pins that we show you in this video in our walkthroughs. So you don't have to adjust those. But if you want to customize it, you can. And then you have how long of a transition you want between each element. You got time, day, subscribers, and views. 
And then once you fill all of that out, it's immediately populated in the code and all this code is custom made for you. Then you copy it to the clipboard. Then we wanna go back over to Arduino, um, select all and paste. And now the code is in here and it has all of our settings and you plug in your microcontroller and hit compile and upload right here. And once that uploads, you're done. I like to do this first just so we can get this out of the way and when we're done building, we're ready. We're gonna start with the electronics, which consists of the display pieces, the microcontroller, and some wires. The first thing we wanna do is we need to connect our two display pieces. You need to be careful, gently, you just pull out one of these panels. And if you do bend these pins when you take it out, that's okay, they're easy to bend back. You just wanna make sure they all stay straight. I like to use this uh, to bend these pins into place, um, but I want you to be careful. Don't, don't do it too fast. Just bend it down and then scoot it up a little bit and then you bend it a little more, just gently, slowly. If you go too fast, you could snap it or break it. And then we want it so tight that those pins being bent actually pull the two pieces together. So you can see the pieces are pulled together and it's connected right there. We're just gonna solder these five pins. You wanna to touch the solder tip to both pieces that you're soldering together, let them heat up and then bring your solder in and make sure that everything you're soldering together is hot enough to melt that solder. Soldering iron on, then bring in the solder. Leave the soldering iron on for a second and then pull it away. And that's a good, clean solder joint. All right, soldering iron, solder, pull away soldering iron. Soldering iron, solder, pull away soldering iron. And our last one. Five perfect little solder joints. Okay, now that we got those soldered together, we need to put our panel back in. And then just be really careful. You gotta put those pins in there. Don't jam them. Just give it a little push down and there you go. For now, we gotta get rid of these pins on the end because it's not gonna fit in the case. And we're just gonna cut those suckers off. And this is probably bad. You probably shouldn't be using your flush cutters for this, but I do, and I buy these in bulk. Next, we're gonna cut the wires down. They don't need to be this long and we're not gonna use the connectors on the end. Now that we've trimmed the wires down, we need to tin them. Tinning the wire is just adding solder to the tip of the wire so the wires don't fray. To start, we need to strip off about a quarter inch of the insulation, and then we're gonna put the soldering iron towards the base of the wire. We're gonna add some solder and move out towards the tip. We're gonna repeat this for each of the wires. Now oftentimes it gets a little bulky at the end of the tip, so I just cut off the ends so we got a nice clean wire. Now that our wires are tinned, we're gonna connect our display and microcontroller. This is my typical wiring order for the project. On the left, we have the pins that are labeled on the microcontroller. In the middle is the corresponding pins on the display unit. And then on the right, I went ahead and wrote the wire colors that I'm using. Keep in mind, your wire colors could be different. It's just important that you make sure the right ones go to the right ones. You also wanna make sure you add fresh solder because who knows what they used on it at the factory or how good it was or what. And we wanna put some more on there. Five volts goes to VCC. And then G stands for ground, and that connects to ground. D7 will go to the digital input pin, or DIN. D8 will go to the chip select pin, or CS. D5 on the microcontroller will connect to the CLK, or the clock pin. So now we have our display wires all hooked up. We're just gonna run these off the microcontroller directly. I like to use this flat piece here to stick to the board. So in that case, we wanna solder the wires to this side. And the red and brown are our positive and negative. So we're gonna take those, put them in there. Heat your soldering iron tip. Touch it to the things that you're going to solder. 
So we'll start with D5, which is the clock, which is the orange wire. Usually easier to just do one at a time. So we're just gonna we're just gonna add that one in. Come over here. There we go. Then we have D7 is yellow. D8 is green. Make sure you don't have any solder bridging the gaps there between two of your connections. We have all five connected. So we want to keep this USB port out towards the middle because that's where we're going to plug into. Just going to add our double-sided tape here. Okay, so we're just going to put that down there. And then the first thing we should do before we complete the build is test it. Because we pre-flashed the microcontroller, we can check to make sure it works right away. So let's see, all our pixels are lit up. So we're good. Now that we have our electronics built, we need to get the case ready. Let's hop on over to 3D printer so I can show you how to get started. To get your enclosure ready, uh, go to our site, go to projects, go to the uh, DIY kit guide, building your own subscription counting clock, and then just scroll down to the 3D models. Uh, you'll see I have two here. One is the whole model. The other is a split version for people with smaller print beds. And uh, you just click on that link. It'll open it up in Fusion 360 here, their online interface. And you can see that's the two models. You got the back cover in the case itself. And you can look at it, zoom around, check it out. But then what you do is you go up to download Drop that down and it gives you, I don't know, whatever file you prefer to use. Most people use STLs for their 3D printer. You click that and you put in your email. So then it'll export it and email you the file. Okay, then you open up the email, you download the file. There we go. And then go into your slicer. I use Ultimaker Cura. Bring the file into the slicer. Uh, put the face down. Now I designed these to be able to uh, work without supports. So you don't have to worry about adding supports. And on my particular um, printer, it does fit on the bed. And go ahead and slice it with your favorite settings. And in my case, it takes about six and a half hours to print. Go ahead and check just to make sure nothing's crazy here. You might want to print your enclosure ahead of time because it can take up to six to eight hours to print the enclosure. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little spacers in that help hold the uh, display items in. And you just put these in, you go about a quarter of the way over from the edge and you put it in vertically like that. The important thing is not exactly how far over they are, but that they're across from one another. There we go. Okay. Now we want to peel off the backing of our vinyl and line it up with the front of our case. You don't have to add the vinyl, but it looks a lot better with the vinyl on the face. Also, part of the design is making the grid for the face has two purposes. One is to give it a nice flat surface for the vinyl to stick to, but two, it actually squares off the pixels so they're not round. Okay, so now we're gonna take our handy dandy X-Acto knife and don't, don't pull anything off, make sure you cut it well, and then you can always go back and trim it up. So don't worry about cutting it perfect the first time. We're just gonna get the big chunks off here. What you want to do, and you can use a razor blade too. Razor blades are cheap and good hobby knives to use. But you want to make sure you're using a fresh blade, whether it's an X-Acto knife or a razor blade. Just hold it about a 45 and gently go down. And you'll see you you'll catch all the little overhangs. The really cool thing is you can get different materials. And, you know, you could do other colors, white, very customizable. And if you don't like it, you can just peel it off and do it again. So now we have our electronics, we have our case. We need to assemble the two. And we're just gonna push this down in there. 
and be careful not to get those foam pads to roll up. All right, I'm just gonna push that down and boom. I designed it so it has a little bit of wiggle room so you can scoot it left or right depending on how it lines up with the, the front pixels. Now we don't put our back on until we put the USB cord in. It's good to loop the cable around like that so you're not pulling on it at a 90 degree. There we go, got it on there. All right, so here's the final product. We have written instructions on the site if you need more details or like to read through it and look at photos. Also, we do sell the kit on the site if you don't wanna look for these parts yourself. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe. If you think somebody might be interested and have fun learning doing a project like this, make sure you share it with them. Thanks for watching.